Do you want to take the floor, Mrs. Andreasen? Please. Thank you. Um, the actual crisis, uh, which was economic before it became financial, does show to a certain extent, or to a big extent, that uh, EU funding did not achieve the results uh, that it was due to achieve. The economies to which this funding went have not actually grown. So uh, we have to, this implies that there was not a very good use of the uh, funding. Now, does the European Court of Auditors feel that they have a certain responsibility here in the sense that they didn't send a clear message to taxpayers that uh, the funding was not going to the right people for the right purpose? Uh, the second question I would like to ask is that if the European Court of Auditors today feel it is trusted by taxpayers, by the citizens in Europe. My impression it is, it is that it is not trusted, but I want to hear your impression. Uh, Mr. Caldera, you spoke about moving on to measuring efficiency, but in my view we are far from being at the point where we can say we know that people who ask for the funding are really qualified. So we are very much into the uh, evaluation of the procedural and qualification uh, status, but not of the efficiency. How can we move from one phase to the other? Um, Mr. Carlson, you refer to your idea some years ago about uh, reviewing the revenue side of the budget. Now, reviewing the revenue side of the budget is not exactly uh, getting into the accounts of the member states. The European semester will get into the accounts, and this would, you know, materialize much more in a fiscal union. I don't think the auditors have to adopt this rule. I understand you may, be, you may want to evaluate if the revenue side, the contribution that the member states make, is accurate or not. And I think the, the European Court of Auditors is doing this now. But going into a further phase, you are entering into a political arena, and it's the fiscal union arena, which I wouldn't agree the auditors should get into. Uh, could you also tell us how an Auditor General would help? You mentioned you would support an Auditor General. How would it help? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Andreas. Uh, no, I don't, think that, uh, um, I don't think that the Court should enter into any political adventures. Uh, uh, it's very important uh, that the independent institutions stick to their roles and the and um, if, uh, as I once said to one of my friends in the court, by the way, uh, if the referee tries to snatch the ball during the match, everything goes to pieces. So I absolutely agree with you that the court shouldn't go into any political adventure of uh, a, a common fiscality or anything like that. The court should help uh, it make, uh, to make possible a uh, responsible audit of the European revenue. This is what I suggest. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Carson, so I will try oh, I to... I forgot one. Please. No, I'm sorry, Auditor General, I have to tell. Uh, sorry, uh, Vitar. Uh, yes, uh, I think it's absolutely important that all member states have a say on the operations of the Court of Auditors. I think we need, at any rate, to have a Council of European Audit. But to lead the day-to-day -day operations is today handled by 27 excellent members. Uh, who are primus inter pares. That is not good management, in my view. I think good management would be that there is one person responsible to carry out the work program and see to it that the budget of the court is well spent. I think that a National Audit Council should set the framework, the action program and the budget, but an Auditor General should lead at his or her own 
uh, authority and with two deputies, the operations. The problem of the court was already, when I was a member of it, too many chiefs and too few Indians. And that problem has aggravated, and I think that an Auditor General is the best way to solve that problem. But I underline one thing that is very important, of course, for you parliamentarians. Uh, uh, that is that I would not like to, try to cut the links between member states and the court. That would be very dangerous. That should be kept, but it would be given another form than today. Thanks a lot. Now, Mr. Caldera. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief uh, uh, to one question Mrs. Andreasen put forward. Is, uh, is the court trusted? And she gave an answer. No, the court is not trusted. So I think the court is trusted primarily by the stakeholders, and the main stakeholder is this institution. So if this parliament does not trust the court, we have a problem. I don't believe this parliament does not trust the court. On the contrary, I think we have uh, proofs every day that uh, the work of the court is appreciated and taken seriously by this institution. Uh, how to measure that trust in the European citizens uh, that might of an institution of the European Union, that might be a different question, and I am not uh, aware of any measure I can give you at this point. But uh, my understanding is that mirroring the parliamentarians elected by the citizens, we should be trusted. Uh, moving for a more uh, uh, for an, an approach that provides focus, uh, a more intense focus on efficiency. Uh, indeed, we are doing that for several years. We are aiming even to focus not only on efficiency, but also on the economy and effectiveness of the measures taken in the different policies. This can be also related and increased if the regulatory framework, as I said in my introduction, would also be less compliance-driven and more performance-oriented. And then all the issues related to efficiency and economy will be, uh, uh, so to say, um, a subject of our audit because what we look when we uh, grant subsidies when we approve programs would be performance oriented so the move would be by putting our effort our resources prioritizing those areas where the risk lies those areas where we buy our audit you can add value to our stakeholders uh, through our uh, reports and opinions and therefore uh, drawing uh, and raising awareness on the points needing improvement. Uh, and I think we have done our role in auditing the uh, funds allocated uh, by the European Commission in, and under the proposal of the European Commission by the Council and this Parliament to member states in need, namely in the structural funds and uh, agriculture funds uh, after the economic crisis in 2008, we have already reported to this Parliament in our annual report what we have perceived, and I believe uh, uh, there, uh, the Court has done what it's supposed to do. Naturally, uh, those are processes that will go on, on over time, and we'll see the final effects of those measures in due course. Uh, that is what I would add. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, as we have uh, some more distinguished speakers this afternoon, I just uh, would like to give Mr. Carlson for one uh, short addition, and then I think we go further on in the program. Um, on the question of the trust of the court, when I walk the streets of Stockholm and meet people there, and then I, after having left the court, I was a member of the Swedish government, a uh, minister of migration, which is not always very popular. But one thing, this is just anecdotal evidence, is that they say, well, but when you had this important job in Luxembourg, that was really important. No, I have a clear feeling when walking the streets of Stockholm that the court is trusted and that people out there think that we perform a very important uh, role in the European context, very much so. So among the people that I meet, we, uh, I have met a lot of trust. Thank you.